How could a bear be the size of a dinosaur? It sounds impossible, doesn't it? But it's true. Octotherium angustidens, or the beast bear, was as large as the Allosaurus, and with that insane size, it was one of the most ferocious land predators to ever exist. In fact, it's now debated if it should be crowned the true king of all land predators. So, stay tuned as we dive into the extraordinary life of this ancient beast. Starting with its appearance, Octotherium probably looked a lot like today's spectacle bear. It had a big body, a somewhat short snout, and round ears. But the short snout might just look that way because its face was deep, not because it was actually short. These bears had medium-sized jaws and teeth, suggesting they ate both meat and plants. That's different from herbivorous bears, which have short jaws and big cheek teeth, and carnivorous bears, which have the opposite. Now, Octotherium angustidens is one of the five Octotherium species. Four of the five species were similar in size to modern-day bears, weighing up to 880 pounds or 400 kilograms. However, the giant short-faced bear, Octotherium angustidens, is the largest documented bear ever. One fossil suggested it could weigh up to 4,500 pounds or 2,040 kilograms, standing up to 14 feet or 4.2 meters tall on its hind legs. That means it was taller than both an average T-Rex and an African bush elephant when it stood upright. In a comparison of its weight, the largest polar bear ever recorded weighed about 2,200 pounds or 997 kilograms. Another shocking fact about these bears is that their arms were three times longer than a human's. That said, its scientific name Octotherium means bear beast in Greek, perfectly describing its enormous size. But how did it grow so big? Well, the source behind Octotherium's gigantism is believed to be the extinction of Chapel Melania, which was a highly specialized omnivore with a diet similar to modern bears. With Chapel Melania gone, intense competition for resources may have eased, allowing Octotherium to rapidly increase in size. This allowed it to become the largest predator during the early Pliocene and early Pleistocene periods. Now, scientists haven't extensively studied this bear's behavior, but it's believed to have behaved similarly to modern bears, so it likely lived solitarily except during breeding seasons and preferred caves or dens as habitats, possibly hibernating in winters in certain regions. Mothers gave birth to a few cubs after a gestation period lasting approximately six to nine months, and communication among these bears likely involved grunts, chuffing, and snorting. You'll be surprised to know that despite its massive size, Octotherium angustidens was pretty efficient in catching prey, thanks to its proportionally long legs that made it possible for it to reach crazy high speeds. It could potentially cross 40 meters or 60 kilometers per hour, similar to a grizzly bear, despite being significantly heavier. Apart from that, it had a strong sense of smell as indicated by the structure of its skull. It is believed that it could detect scents over multiple miles or kilometers, which was pretty handy when it needed to locate and catch prey. Octotherium was found primarily in Argentina, with possible occurrences in El Salvador and Bolivia. Specimens indicate that this giant bear preferred open plains, but also ventured into forested areas. Rare finds also suggest that Octotherium occasionally inhabited paleo burrows, where multiple bodies have been discovered. But one thing is clear, while Octotherium certainly had a love for burrows, it likely didn't create them. Instead, it is believed to have conquered burrows dug by various other animals. These played a significant role in the bear's life, serving as shelter and, potentially, a source of conflict. Competition for burrows among individuals was pretty common, leading to battles and takeovers. And this intense competition likely contributed to an increase in the number of paleo burrows during the early Paleocene, as Octotherium forced other animals to regularly evacuate or face potential conflict. So, being the big bully it was, what did it prey on? Well, these bears had an omnivorous diet, though the specific foods varied among species. The giant short-faced bear ate plant matter, but primarily preyed on large animals like giant ground sloths, camels, tapirs, ancient relatives of elephants, and glyptodonts, or giant armadillos. Fossil evidence of broken teeth suggests it also gnawed on bones, possibly as a scavenger rather than an active hunter, due to competition with agile predators like saber-toothed cats. Its size and strength allowed it to intimidate and even chase away these competitors from kills. 
The other four Octotherium species probably leaned more towards fruit and leaves than meat, spending much of their time foraging for vegetation. Competition with predators may have led to their shift towards a more herbivorous diet over time. But who could possibly dare to threaten this beast? Adult Octotherium likely faced few consistent predators due to its massive size and ferocity. But injuries on fossils suggest it likely fought with other big animals often. The only predator big enough to rival it back then would have been a Smilodon populator, but its cubs may have been at risk from other big cats and birds of prey. Now let's look into some of the most similar animals to this bear. Octotherium belongs to a group of bears called the Tremarctinae, known for their short faces. While we'll dive into its family tree in more detail later in this video, for now you should know that the other main bear groups are the pandas, Iluropodinae, and modern bears, Yersinae, which include grizzly and black bears. Within the Tremarctinae, there are three major groups. The first one is the spectacled bear, Tremarctos. This is the only surviving member of the short-faced bears. The Florida short-faced bear, another member of this group, went extinct around 11,000 years ago. Spectacled bears are characterized by their short snouts, black bodies, and distinctive white and ginger markings. They are considered vulnerable and are found along the Andean mountain range. The second one is Octodus. This was the North American equivalent of Octotherium, a massive short-faced bear weighing up to 2,100 pounds and standing up to 10 feet tall on its hind legs. They primarily preyed on large animals like deer and mammoths, but likely also ate plants. Octodus may have been more of a scavenger than an active predator, and the third bear group is known as Pleonoctus. Now this is the oldest member of the short-faced bears, dating back 10 million to 3 million years ago. It is possibly an ancestor of other short-faced bears, but little is known about it. Pleonoctus was likely similar in size to the spectacled bear. Now that you know which animals it shares the most similarities with, let's roll the clock all the way back to when this bear was first discovered. The first fossil from the Octotherium genus was discovered way back in 1852, but it wasn't until 1880 that the genus was officially named by the German-Argentine zoologist Hermann Burmeister after fossils from Aeogustodons were found. Since then, many fossils from this genus have been uncovered. In 1935, during the construction of the San Juan de Dios Hospital in La Plata City near Buenos Aires, Argentina, a pair of arm bones and shoulder blades from the giant short-faced bear were found. It wasn't until 2011 that these bones were thoroughly studied for the first time. Dating back a million years, they belonged to the largest bear ever found, as mentioned earlier. Since only the arm bones were found, scientists had to estimate the bear's total size. Interestingly, despite the attention given to the giant short-faced bear, fossils from A. wingai and A. torrigensa are much more common. This might suggest that they were the most successful species in the Octotherium genus. Let's look into their family and evolution some more. Octotherium belongs to the Tremarctinae subfamily of bears, also known as short-faced bears, which also includes Octodus, North American short-faced bears, and Tremarctus, the Floridian and modern spectacled bear. The common ancestor of these bears is Pleonoctus, dating back to around 10 million years ago in North America. Around 5 million years ago, there was a significant increase in diversity among Tremarctans and other bears due to changes in vegetation, climate, and fauna. Octotherium, Octodus, and Tremarctus likely diverged around 4.8 million years ago. The earliest confirmed remains of Octotherium in South America are from A. Augustidans, found in Buenos Aires, Argentina, dating between 1 to 0.7 million years ago during the Encenadan period. A. Augustidans became extinct around 700,000 years ago and was replaced by smaller species. Successor species like A. vetustum, A. beneriensa, A. togensa, and A. wingae appeared during the middle to late Pleistocene, with A. wingae being the smallest but most widespread species. Within Octotherium, two clades are identified, A. beneriensa and A. togensa. A. beneriensa and A. togensa are considered more derived, while A. vetustum and A. wingae are considered more primitive, but they are also the most successful in terms of temporal and geographic range and the frequency of fossil finds. Finally, as to what wiped these giant short-faced bears off the planet, they likely disappeared between 500,000 to 800,000 years ago. This could be because it had to compete with other top predators like jaguars, cougars, and wolves. Other species of Octotherium might have survived until about 10,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age. 
The last sightings of Arctotherium include one in Uruguay, about 36,900 or 14,485 years ago, another in Chile, around 10,345 years ago, and one in Mexico, approximately 12,850 years ago, with a possible sighting in Venezuela about 9,000 years ago. Interestingly, some Arctotherium remains were found alongside human remains in Mexico. The spectacled bear, Tromarctus, doesn't show up in South America's fossil records until much later, suggesting it came from North America after Arctotherium went extinct. It's possible that as modern spectacled bears moved southward, they might have mixed with Arctotherium. During a period called the Quaternary Extinction Event, species with simpler body shapes, like the Tromarctus bear, were more likely to survive. In the end, Arctotherium augustidens, the giant short-faced bear, was the largest land predator of its era. With speeds matching grizzly bears despite its larger size, it was a formidable hunter that even the big cats of its habitat feared. That's a wrap for this video. What would you do if you were ever to encounter Arctotherium augustidens in the wild? Would you follow the age-old advice and lie down? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.